Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My British Supply. I hope you enjoy this video. It's gonna be on contracts, puppy contracts or dog contracts. Um, and please subscribe to us, it helps us wanna do more videos. Okay, so I did in the car with Tammy, we had a general conversation about contracts. And when I'd finished that, I had got quite a few questions that came from that. And I thought, you know what, didn't really treat the whole thing thoroughly so let's just do it properly and let's do a multi-part video about contracts so uh, we're talking about contracts when you are going to either sell a dog or is a or you're buying a dog um, whether it's be a puppy or an older dog what the hell should be in a contract what's the purpose of it how does it work how do you enforce contracts that kind of stuff okay so the reason for a contract is it protects both the buyer and seller. The contract, typically, it never is used. I mean, everything's wonderful, everybody's happy, there's no reason to go to the contract and say, hey, there's a problem, this is what we said we'd do. But if there is a problem, and look, things happen. I mean, you can sell somebody a puppy, and the puppy develops some kind of a problem completely unknown to you, but it happens, what does the contract say that you're gonna do about it? So the contract is there to um, decide what happens in the event there's a problem. Now, there are other reasons for a contract. You as a seller want to give confidence to the buyer that you are a reputable person and that you'll stand behind the product, in this case a puppy or a dog, that you're selling that person. Remember, people are gonna spend a lot of money with you and they want a certain amount of confidence that this is going to work out well for them. And, and, and that's absolutely fair enough, of course. So remember that the contract is also one more thing that you're presenting to your customer that gives them a warm and fuzzy feeling about what you're doing. So to that point, don't make a contract that's 16 pages, please. I mean, I see these contracts and I just, I just like, with all of these silly requirements in it, the, to me are completely missing the point. You've got to remember that a contract is there. It needs to be short and sweet. It needs to define the significant things that are going to happen and what's going to happen and who's going to do what in those circumstances. And don't just put a whole bunch of other measures in there like this dog needs to be taken out on the leash for three hours every day and needs to be fed this particular food. You know, these things just don't help people have a fuzzy feeling about what you're selling. So my advice would be, Short and sweet, to the point. Um, and look, I'm not a lawyer, so anything that I'm telling you here, don't hold me to it. But this is what I've done over the years. Anytime that I want to have a contract, I will go look at other people's contracts. And I'll read through it and I'll think to myself, yep, that, I didn't think about that, and that I don't think is in, in, irrelevant. And then I will go pick and choose the various pieces from somebody else's contract. Nothing illegal about this, you're not plagiarizing it. And then taking that contract and then drawing up your own contract. Should you have a lawyer look at it? I never have. I've never had a problem with it. I have had contracts we've had to go back to the contract, but I've never had a lawyer physically look at these things. But look, if you don't know what you're doing, then certainly enlist the, the, the help of somebody who, who is either a lawyer or at least has some understanding about you know, what needs to be in there. Because you know, the reality of it is if you get a lawyer involved in this, they tend to make these huge long documents with all kinds of funny wording in there. And I can tell you this, in most cases, contracts are probably difficult to enforce. Um, it's, if you are in a situation where you have to go back to the contract, you better hope that both parties are gonna behave properly. Because if this ends up being a legal matter, then you've gotta to go to court with all the expenses of it. And then even after that, you've gotta go get the money out of that person. Just because you win in court, doesn't mean you're getting paid. The idea of a contract, basically, in my opinion, is it's a vehicle that lets you set up the stage so in the event there's a problem, you can have a reasonable negotiation to sort the problem out. And to that wit, by the way, um, you know, there are, you know, if you do much of this, there's going to be times where things don't go quite the way they should do. And I think this, this, the sign of both a good buyer and a good seller are people who can get together and resolve problems. Almost always these problems are resolvable in some amicable but matter. When something goes wrong, nobody wants that. And so, um, you know, being able to sort things out and be sensible about things, both as the buyer and seller, is paramount to getting things done properly. Um, 
And of course, the other thing about this is, is you can sign any contract you want with somebody. If they're not reputable, the contract's a complete waste of time. So just because you've got a contract doesn't mean that you can enforce a contract. So remember, the contract, I mean, it's, I think that any time that you're buying something of significance, to have a contract that explains what's going to happen is great. But just because you've got a contract doesn't mean you're going to win. All right, so, so I'm just going to write some things down. So, so first off, you've got to realize what we just talked about. What is the purpose of the contract? What are you trying to get done? Both in terms of a seller and a buyer. So that's fundamental. You've got to decide, you know, what are you doing? Right. So the next thing is going to be is, is you've got to remember this contract is going to describe what you're selling, what the person's expecting to get, and what is going to happen in the event that there's a problem. So you've got to make a list of all the things that you're going to put in that contract to make sure they're there. So, so, so primarily, this is, this is to fix problems. This is the purpose of this, is to fix problems. That's the purpose of it. And also to give the buyer confidence. That's the other thing you've got to remember. This is not just about you selling a product. It's about you giving confidence to the buyer that you are a reputable person, that you understand there could be a problem. If there is, you're going to do something about it. Okay, so the next thing is you've got to have in here. You need to describe what you are getting. So if you're buying a puppy, then you should put down the sex of the puppy, the age of the puppy, and its characteristics. And if you are selling a dog as a special color, like a lilac, or Isabella, new shade, whatever, you best know the DNA. You do not want to, and I see a lot of this, where somebody will say, oh, it's a lilac dog, and they have no real proof it's a lilac dog. That is a huge mistake. You need to know what you're selling, and that needs to be described in this contract. So this is a puppy, it's, it's 10, 10 weeks old, and it's a lilac and tan, and this is what its DNA is. So you need to be able to stand behind what you're selling. There's too many people out there who are selling dogs but not sure what they're selling, and that can get, you know, that's gonna get somebody upset. They paid a lot of money for a dog. If they get more than what they paid for, everybody's happy, well, the buyer is. So just make sure that you're describing what it is. So, you know, if there's, if you want to be thorough about this, you should probably put in the parents, you know, what parents it came from. So this is another thing here. When you sell somebody a puppy and you've got eight puppies in a litter, you better have a way of identifying these puppies. You don't want to get into a situation where you put videos and pictures out and then you got confused and you sent them the wrong dog. Because I can tell you that people who are looking at your puppies to buy, they are pouring over those pictures, they're falling in love with that puppy before they ever got it, and they will probably know more about the markings of that dog than you will. So if you send them a dog and it has a white blotch on it in the video on the shape of Texas, but the dog you send them has a white blotch in the shape of Oklahoma, you're having a potential problem, and so you should have, and that was a silly mistake, don't make it. All right, okay. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna put some things, purpose of contract, I'm gonna put some things, by the way, here that we don't want. We don't want this silly, long-winded, long-winded, unnecessary long, lots of restrictions, that doesn't help anybody. So watch out for that, don't, don't make your contract long-winded, okay. So this is what you're selling, right? So then the next thing is, is there needs to be a start, a stop point for the contract. This contract starts maybe the day they get delivery, or maybe the day they give you deposit. And then that contract then goes on and is in effect for some date. For us, it's till the dog is one year old, for us. But it might be one year from when they received the puppy. It might be two years, it might be six months. Got to spell it out. What is the deal? What? How long is this contract good for? Um, and that's another thing, by the way. If you get a dog, and um, and then you know it, it's it's a, a, a contract was for a year, and it's a year and three months, and there's a problem. It's not covered by the contract. It doesn't mean that you can't talk to the to the seller and try to negotiate something in the event that something went wrong. But remember, that contract after the period stated in the contract, it is done. Okay. The next thing is, obviously you need to have signatures. You need to make sure that everybody understands and both parties sign this signature and have copies of it. Otherwise, not much use at all. You've got to have a signature, okay. So then the next thing is gonna be is what, you know, it's gonna be what happens, what are you warranting? What are you guaranteeing on this dog? And so typically, and again, look, 
this is for you to decide what you want to do, look at the comments, but for us, this would be a health guarantee. And that is going to be, for us, would cover life-threatening genetic defects or, or inherited defects. I mean, if the dog dies, and the dog dies because it was got run over, it's not covered. If the dog gets in trouble because it bounced off a sofa and broke a leg, it's not covered. If, and so if this dog had a cherry eye, that's not life threatening, it wouldn't be covered. If this dog has diarrhea and has parasites, we don't know where they come from, we wanna help you sort that problem out, but it wouldn't be covered. But if this dog also, all of a sudden develops cancer, or if this do dog all of a sudden starts to have seizures, or if this dog all of a sudden was found to have a serious heart defect that would seriously impact its life, those things would be covered. So, the, the, so here you've got to spell out what you will and also maybe some of the things that you will not cover. Don't make a long list of don'ts, but you might put some list of things that are common things that you could see, for instance, in the breed that you're selling to say, look, you know, these dogs can have a cherry eye. They can have smaller nares. These are things that are not covered. So you, I would spell out the obvious, and I would specifically say what you're covering. But again, don't take that as being the right answer. You've got to decide what it is. Okay. So the next thing is, is typically that, that for us, any dog that's going to travel within a week of it traveling, it's going to have a vet check. So we are going to have a licensed veterinary check the animal out for everything we possibly can that's reasonable that it doesn't have gut parasites, that it doesn't have a temperature, that its eyes are clear, that its ears are clear, that it doesn't have funny joints, it doesn't have, you know, there's nothing, it doesn't have a problem with its palate, its heart sounds good, its lungs sound good, that the dog is in good health. So we want to send out and we are going to tell people that we are going to make that upon ourselves to make sure that dog's a healthy dog before it ever leaves. And then we are going to require you to have a vet check at your end when you receive the dog. So vet check by customer. And so you need to put a time frame on that. Look, I see contracts where they say, dog must be checked within 48 hours. They get the dog on a Friday night and the vet's not open till Monday, or maybe it's Monday's a holiday. And there's no way that they can possibly get a vet check done in three days. Be reasonable about this. Look, you know, what you don't want is if there's a problem with the dog, you'd like to get the thing resolved as quickly as possible. But whether or not that dog has a vet check within, you know, a day of receiving it, that's not the critical part. The point about a vet check is, is if the dog has developed something like Parvo, uh, which obviously you don't want to be part of that, but it, let's say that happened, the dog got Parvo, you want to know that that didn't happen because the buyer was silly and three weeks later, put that, took that dog to a puppy, to a dog park, and it contracted Parvo, and it was on their watch, and it's not covered by your warranty. As opposed to a dog that they get within two days develop symptoms of Parvo, that's on, your, that's on your dime. So this needs to be done in a sensible length of time, but make it reasonable for your customer. Make it so you don't, don't make a contract something where you can just protect yourself and just put it all on the customer, and they can never get things done. That's the point. All right. Okay, so then, so then I'm going to cut, get this side off over here. So we've got a bit more room. See how long we're into this for. And I think we're going to make that part one. So part two is going to be uh, about how you, what happens if somebody has to go to the contract, how you're going to behave, what's going to happen. So again, subscribe to us. We'd really appreciate it. Part two coming right after this. Bye, everybody.